Well, the year of the founding of Nollywood is considered to be 1992, when the electronic seller Kenneth Ndebure shot the film Life in the Slum for a month with a budget of $12,000. Nollywood is an industry providing jobs for more than a million Nigerians. Nigerians, actors of popular films are known throughout the continent, while they earn not so big amounts as their American counterparts. Usually the stars of Nollywood are shot uh, simultaneously uh, in several pictures and receive an average of 1,000 to 5,000 per film. Goodness. Well, in 2015, Bank of Industry launched a program to support Nollywood and began issuing loans to filmmakers. The special group reads the scripts and calculates the budgets of the film and then gives recommendations for the final investment. Joining us to discuss this and more is Nollywood actor Kiki Omedi. Good morning to you, Kiki. Thank you for joining us. Reading that introduction, thank you so much. Reading that introduction, it is shocking to hear that you'd have so such popular actors from such popular uh, feature films earning so little. Has that been your experience in this industry? Well, no. I, I, I kind of think that maybe people have um, the wrong idea of the amount of money that actors earn. It's actually very possible to earn very well in this industry. Unfortunately, there are many things that limit us, you know, that hamper our progress, things like budget constraints and all that. And the fact that there aren't too many grants that you get from uh, from the government, you know, as regards Nollywood. But um, on the fact that actors earn so little, no, I wouldn't agree with you. So basically, you're saying that on average, an, an actor earns a lot more than, you know, $1,000 to $5,000. Um, oh, oh, you're talking dollars. Yes, <laughs> dollars, yes. Uh, actually, for some, for, <laughs> for some second, I thought you were talking Naira. No, no, um, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. When you, I was, I was a bit scandalized, to be honest. Um, I mean, when you, when you consider the exchange rate, right, and then you consider where Nollywood is in the scheme of things, you consider where Nigeria as a country um, is in the scheme of things, then it's not too far-fetched, you know, that that would be the average take-home of a Nollywood actor. Um, doctors in Nigeria don't, don't earn more than 1000 to $5,000 monthly. I'm, I'm talking doctors who studied you know, in school for how many years, you know, who should be, um, what will I say, who should be like put on a pedestal and, you know, should be given all the money in the world. Doctors, they don't, they don't earn more than a thousand to five thousand dollars a month. So I think it's more of like a systemic problem if we were being on. Okay, would you say this is as a result of the kind of industry we're in, looking at the fact that a lot of films are privately funded, while um, for a lot of doctors, it's, uh, you know, based, we have a lot of government hospitals. Yes, some privately funded as well. But like, you know, we had the last get say is what you get and it's what you're giving based on what you get. Would you say that's it, probably why? Well, yes, it's also a very big problem. I imagine that if we had big studios funding movies the way they have in Hollywood, the actors will earn a whole lot more. But like I said earlier, it's a big systemic problem because even in the private hospitals, um, doctors would not averagely earn a thousand to five thousand dollars. I mean, given the exchange rates, five thousand dollars is comfortably over two million naira, right? Mm -hmm. There aren't too many doctors, um, you know, in the in private hospitals that earn that earn that, you know, unless maybe they were like the owner of the hospital. So when I say it's a systemic problem, I mean it's a general Nigerian problem. Uh, how much the teachers earn, for instance? I feel like the people. Who, who matter in quotes because teachers matter to the to the youths and to the next generation if we're being honest but um when many of them are not well paid then they become very disillusioned and then they leave the country it's same for doctors and i find that many actors are actually doing the same so mm -hmm. it's it's across board it's across board unfortunately right well if we if we look at you i i wonder if you'd uh describe yourself as a bit of an anomaly because you've had such a decorated career you've won so many awards in so many different countries tell us about the the time where you felt most proud of yourself as an actor uh, during the space of your career well to be honest i always say that um you know an actor is a prophet and film is a tool it's a medium it's it's, it's almost like gospel so um, many people learn so many lessons from the things that they take away from movies. And, um, you know, I always say that I try to make an effort, like when I produce movies or when I write, you know, to impart some kind of knowledge because 
so many people get to watch these films and it's an opportunity for you to pass across certain messages and um, address certain issues. So personally for me, every time I run into a fan of Nollywood who has seen one or several of my movies and who tells me how much um, a movie of mine that they saw, you know, how much it impacted on their lives, you know, how they learned several lessons or how much they enjoyed just watching me and enjoyed seeing me do what I do. You know, every time that happens for me is uh, it's a moment of pride. Interesting. I can only imagine how that must feel. Well, let us throw over to one of your um, movies that you've actually acted in. This is Moth to a Flame. What's happening? Where are you going? Where are you going? Take me home this minute! Will you please just shut the hell up? Joe! I said, shut up! When you want to take a man down, the first thing you want to do is your research. At times like this, I need to be able to shoulder my responsibilities. Kenny! I'm not going to allow you to do this to yourself. Sorry. <laughs> oh God, it's okay. <laughs> I'm new in town, I need a driver. And he'll take me around until I can figure out my way around town. And um, I work for him now. She helped. She's my driver. Huh. Are you Gaddafi? How did this happen? Did you send out a memo or an advert placement that you wanted a female as a driver? She drives you, the boss, and she follows you around like a lost puppy. Why do you act like it's such an issue when I talk about my daughter-in-law? She's not your daughter-in-law yet. Ah, see, you said it correctly. Yet. Hey, baby. How are you? My hearts of hearts. But Mom gave you my address? Of course she did. I've missed you, baby. But you didn't tell you? me you were coming. That's why it's called a surprise, dummy. Look, I want no part in this, all right? This is between you and him. You should have forgotten what you did to my father a long time ago, okay? Hey, you are my son. So you're very much a part of this. I'm Rosalind. His babe, his woman. Well, we've Interesting. just yes, exactly. <laughs> it was. We've just seen a clip from Moth to a Flame, which you you starred in. There. Tell us a bit more about the experience on set for that film, and then further, I wanted to ask you about the. I don't want to say that there isn't variety in the industry when it comes to Nollywood movies, but what else do you think is missing in terms of the content of these films? Uh, in Nollywood. Okay, um, so your first question about my experience on the set of that movie. Um, in that movie, I played a taxi driver, which is a role that um, I probably hadn't played before. And that's kind of like what informs my role selections. I, I always try to do something different from what I've done before. Now, um, concerning what might be missing from the industry. Now, unfortunately, we live in a certain kind of society. And we tend to try to make movies that the audience can relate to. And um, certain movies just will not fly. You know, the way Hollywood has at their liberty, um, you know, the opportunity to do, you know, all kinds of movies like sci-fi movies and, you know, like, you know, action hero films and all that. Films like that just won't fly in Nigeria because they're not really things that we can relate to. And the Nigerian audience, they like to watch Nollywood movies that they can relate to. So if you were to address issues such as domestic violence, um, you know, family issues, issues of drug abuse or whatever. You know, those are all things that they would be willing to watch from Nollywood. But um, in my experience, I've come to see that the average Nigerian doesn't really want to watch certain kinds of movies out of Nollywood. But that being said, um, it doesn't mean that there's no opportunity for growth. I mean, when I produced a film called Run, I wanted to do a different kind of film. So Run is, um, is shot almost entirely um, on the streets of Lagos at night. So it's a different kind of feel, you know, from what you would usually get in Hollywood. So in terms of what might be missing in terms of content, I think maybe we just need to diversify um, a little bit more, maybe leave interior spaces, 
and maybe just try to do a whole lot more with the beauty that is Nigeria. But um, there's also a reason why people don't exactly like to do that. Many producers like to film in a controlled environment. When you are filming exterior scenes in Lagos, for instance, there's so much you have to take into cognizance. Um, you have all kinds of people trying to disturb your shoots, trying to ask you for money before they can leave you alone to do what you're supposed to do. So there's just a lot that producers have to deal with. Um, producers are not exactly protected against unscrupulous um, individuals, you know, um, on the streets of Lagos. You hear stories of producers having to fight, you know, <laughs> these kinds of people because they're trying to film exterior scenes, you know, just to have some kind of variety and to make things look beautiful. And uh, this, I would say, is one of the major reasons why you tend to see a lot of Nollywood movies taking place inside the house as opposed to uh, area. That's really interesting to note. Um, I like what you mentioned with regards to touching on several issues like domestic violence in our films to send a positive message. I think you directed a movie Messages. like that once where you were pregnant what? and then the husband goes to have extramarital affairs and then comes back home with HIV, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yes. I, I produced that you one. Produced. It was called Unprotected. Yes, yeah, Unprotected. It was, uh, yes, it was a short film, actually. Like I said earlier, I believe in film being a tool to effect change and mm -hmm. being a tool with which you can pass across a message. So while I, I think it's awesome to be entertained, um, you know, while you're watching a movie, it doesn't hurt to take a thing or two away. So that was what I tried to do with Unprotected. I was just essentially passing across a message to um, promiscuous husbands. <laughs> I loved it. I absolutely <laughs> did. Now let's talk about Netflix Thank coming so into much. Africa, specifically Nigeria. Now, um, Nigeria, I'd like to get your thoughts about this. When they put out that picture, um, basically marking the start of the partnership that we're going to have, there were different conversations as to the people featured in the picture, whether or not this was a pure representation of Nollywood. Different sides to it. Some were very excited, like, yes, finally, our narrative is going to be told, is, is being told by ourselves, by ourselves, rather, you know, we are going to tell our stories ourselves. While some felt like, hmm, this is looking a bit one-sided. So as an actor in the industry, this is something that you're greatly going to benefit from. What are your thoughts on Netflix coming into Nigeria and the direction they have taken thus far in, you know, establishing their content, or rather our content, on their platform? Okay, so... um. I think when Netflix came into Nigeria, okay, when you even say came into Nigeria, it's kind of dicey because there has been Nigerian content on Netflix for about maybe five years that I'm aware of because um, I've been in movies since 2015 that have actually been on Netflix. But I think in recent times, they began to take more of like an, an avid interest in Nollywood and in having Nollywood content on their platforms. So there's a lot more Nollywood content on those platforms now and they kind of like um, established a presence in Nigeria recently, and they commissioned the Netflix original series. Now, um, truth be told, many people had a problem with that. They felt uh, maybe Netflix was trying to exploit Nigeria. You know, why can't we do this ourselves and blah, blah, blah. I personally like the fact that not, um, Netflix is taking an interest in Hollywood. Naturally, nobody's going to get into bed with you if they don't think that they stand to gain something from you. What I like about the fact that Netflix has um, actively come into Nigeria is the fact that Netflix is a platform that showcases our movies to places where we previously might not have had access to. I mean, the internet is so, I mean, it's so, um, the reach, the reach of the internet is just, is just a second to none, basically. So while we've done a good job distributing our content thus far, uh, places like the Caribbean and, and even like, every other African country, like Nollywood movies are very popular. Um, I don't think there's anything that quite exposes our content to the world, you know, such as an international online platform like Netflix. Is that accessible practically anywhere in the world where there's internet, right? So I think that we get to showcase our talent a lot more. I think that we get the opportunity to tell our stories, you know, to, to the international audience. So I feel like it's a very big opportunity and it's Mm. Kiki, it is time for us to take a very short break. We'll be right with you here. You're welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We still have Nollywood actor Kiki O'Milly in the studio. Well, not with us, but <laughs> technically with us, talking about our Nollywood and, of course, the content that we are creating. Netflix coming out to 
give us a few new stuff, for example, a new series that we're expecting to see soon. Now, speaking of Netflix, Kikio, maybe you have one of your movies that I think came out really, really nicely on Netflix a couple of days. Before we talk about the, your experience um, in that movie, let's take a look at the trailer for it. I was thinking we should uh, get out of town this weekend with the wives. My place in Ibadan. Great, fantastic. Uh, it's it's going to be our first getaway since our honeymoon. I'm sure the girls would love that. Telling her friends my thing isn't working. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> what is going on? Help me ask him, Ebabi. My name is Tommy Lola Wright. I'm a 29 year old advertising executive. You know, you just threw trash on the road. When is the trash can right beside you? My life is basically structured, boring, and pretty much routine. Like this. Let me keep the crown at Bush Baby like this. <laughs> 